Were you as caught off guard as I was about the new Digimon game or what it's even going to be about? Or do you want to know how little it takes to get away with saying based on true events? Let us tell you. Welcome to the Nerd News Podcast, starring Tyson Cox and Tyler Walt. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd News. My name is Tyler Waltz, and with me, as always... Tyson Cox. And we're going to get right into it today. Um, yeah. I was very excited about Digimon. I know. you. Just, I'm getting right into it. Do it. So, Digimon is like a, uh, a, a re... What, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, a rediscovered love. Okay. Because, like, as a kid, I adored Digimon. Mm-hmm. Like... Well, it's in a... It's a... Re- coming back, it's in a re- renaissance. Yeah, to a certain degree. It, renaissance on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that exists. Oh, no. Their Digimon are wild. Um, Well, if you don't know what Digimon is, uh, it's... It's other Pokemon. It's other Pokemon. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... What I love about Digimon is the evolutions or the digivolutions go up and down but it's like yeah. it starts out as like a potato or a literal poop <laughs> yeah and, then, right. and it's like a man that's holding a garbage can and then it's a mech that fights gods yes <laughs> like yeah 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 no it gets aggressive fast yeah um so yeah just a, a brief recap i i know that digimon's not the most popular thing in america i am getting back into it so i'm also not completely caught up mm-hmm. so Digimon was one of the biggest competitors for Pokemon in the 90s to early 2000s. Fools. I I liked Digimon more when I was a really little kid mm-hmm. because it was more like aggressive. Like Pokemon yeah. was always like the the cutesy going on an adventure with Ash. Also, Ash is leaving, if you didn't know. That's a whole other side thing. Um, <laughs> but wins one tournament, leaves. Yeah. <laughs> right. Digimon was very much a survival story. Yeah. Like the very first season was about these kids at camp that get like transported to this other world and they just got to figure out how to get out. Yeah. And then Uh, by the end, like they get back to the real world and mm -hmm. digital monsters are starting to destroy cities. Yeah. And like it's dark. It's a very dark show. I love the movie. The, The first movie that came out just absolutely amazing it has a uh, bare naked lady one week up top like right Ooh. at the beginning of the movie amazing it's incredible right. but it also wasn't cutesy like they weren't afraid to go like hard in the paint yeah for her a lot of digimon so i i liked it a lot the problem was is since it wasn't very popular it really kind of just died off in america but mm-hmm. always kept going in japan when you're a really little kid you don't really understand that you just don't see it anymore. Yeah. And then as an adult, you kind of like, you're like, oh, that's still going on. Are you that's telling me there's a chance that there's the big bad Beetleborg somewhere <laughs> in <laughs> season 42? Sure. Some fan artist can make that happen for you. <laughs> give me I give me a little bit of the Beetleborgs meet the superhuman samurai cyber squad. Uh, what? Yep. That was a blanket. <laughs> uh, so, that's a blanket my mom got me. It was It was a show. She knew I liked TV. Like it was like Power Rangers and then it was Beetleborgs. It was a knockoff of that. Okay. And then like. There was the internet version of it, and there was the Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Okay, these names are getting absurd. <laughs> these are shows I watched as a kid. <laughs> I can tell. Just knockoff <laughs> shows. They were so bad, but so good. You, you're telling me as a kid that you liked knockoff shows and rats. Wow. <laughs> I would have never, never guessed that. <laughs> you don't look it at all. <laughs> Anyways, D- Digimon? Yeah, <laughs> Digimon. Um, so it's back. We, the... They've always had certain small releases here in America. Mm -hmm. I know I got back into it with a game called Cyber Sleuth, Mm -hmm. which was, I mean, I played it, honestly, just better Pokemon. They were all 3v3 battles. They all had the same kind of like, uh, like, hey, fire beats water, beats air, beats what, you know, the same thing. Okay. But there was like two layers of it where Pokemon is like, you might have a water ground type, right? And there's 17 types of Pokemon. In Digimon, the core mechanic is that there was like data, virus, and vaccine. Those are your three. Ooh, you can't have that types. one nowadays. Yeah, yeah, sponsored by Pfizer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then you were one of those three types, and virus were like the more evil looking ones, and data were like the neutral, and vaccine were like the healers. Healer, yeah. yeah. And then past that, there was the fire, dark, water, like an element. So, okay. 
in Pokemon, if water hits fire, it does like 1.5 damage or two times the damage. You could mm-hmm. double stack weaknesses based on if you're vaccine fighting virus or virus oh, okay. fighting data. Yeah, yeah. So way more complicated, which is probably another reason it didn't take off here because Pokemon was always very simple. Sure. Yeah. You tell me that and then you tell me like, oh, get your IVs and your EVs. And I'm like, I'm sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And then another reason that I always like Digimon more in Pokemon, I love Bulbasaur. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to take Bulbasaur into like competitive or anything like that or, okay. or carry him through the game yeah. because he gets better when he levels up. Mm-hmm. Digimon's mechanic was if I have an Agumon, I digivolve him into Greymon. Okay. I level him up like 20 times. I can de-digivolve him back to Agumon, keep a certain percentage of the stats onto the younger one. And then when I digivolve again, you're constantly growing. Oh, okay. So you are de digivolving. Digi- so you can go back to your original one or whatever your favorite is, and they're yeah. stronger every time. You oh. might have to put more work into it, but there's always this like accordion of strength going on. Okay. So they're bringing those mechanics into a more traditional game that is being released in February. I still think it's primarily a Japanese release, mm-hmm. um, but I think it's February 23rd. And it's called uh, Digimon. What was it? Uh, yeah, it's Digimon World, which was their most famous game of all time back in the day. Okay. But it's called Next Order. All right. Um, another thing, Digimon die. Like, they just... Oh, they don't faint out? Die. Like, when you're battling... Like them, an old age and type 2 diabetes? Yeah, 100%. It's That's not even a joke. <laughs> like, what? you'll just be running around, and then you'll look back at Agumon, and he's just fucking... Like, <laughs> dead. What? Yeah, they have lifespans. So they'll die, and their data goes back into a digi egg, and you have to re hatch them, and they completely start over, but they inherit moves and stats okay. All right. from their digi evolutions. Okay. But yeah, sometimes you'll just be kicking it out in the wild training, and then the <laughs> motherfucker just <laughs> falls over. It just isn't anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's but nuts. It's kooky. Yeah. And uh, one of the advertisements was uh, like adventure, battle train food bathroom breaks <laughs> <And> i'm like <laughs> what is this advertisement well it probably have better animation than the sandwich eating in pokemon oh my god that's atrocious it's so sandwich bad. eating makes me upset that's one of those things there's like hey we're launching tomorrow does anyone who did that yeah, they could have taken five minutes and made you sit in a chair <laughs> right you're just sitting on nothing you're, you're sitting f- on glow it's irritating but how does so how does so is there a trailer or anything for the news yes there is a trailer go check it out it's it's very much a um a love note to the original digimon world okay with a new story a new group that's getting taken into the digital world Mm -hmm. and you kind of got to figure it out because the previous game that came out this year was digimon survive which a lot of people had ish qualms with yes because they were expecting a different game they were expecting something very different and it's it's the ish it's the difference between japanese marketing and american marketing Mm -hmm. american marketing is all action if you excuse me if you look at a trailer for an american movie it's very brief snippets of the crazy stuff going on yeah in fact now we have a trailer for the trailer yes which (laughs) kills me yeah which is wild and in a lot of like international previews, you get a lot of the drama and the story and what it's about to get you interested to see the rest of it. Yeah. So if you looked at the Japanese commercials for Survive, it was very much the dark story. Digimon Survive was supposed to be a more gritty, dark, not horror, but sad. Like mm-hmm. it had a sad feel to it. Yeah. Um, and it was a, uh, I can't remember what type of games they are, like the... Not a point and click adventure. It's like a book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the main parts of the, the story. Telltale game. Yeah, no, because it's not a video that's going through. It's very storybooky. Like you're looking at a character and the text is popping up. Ah, and then okay. it goes to the next scene. Like it's uh, it's a flat, stagnant yeah. scene, uh, with little things that kind of move in it. Beautiful art, by the way, for anybody that's interested. Yeah. Beautiful art. Yeah, just misrepresented in America. Yeah, but the fights in the game were just a turn based strategy game Mm -hmm. like it was just a a big board like chess and your digimon could do combat was very fun about 30 percent of the game was the combat yeah all the advertisements here combat 
which I heard like in the wild, I was uh, I was at like a game store and I heard a guy telling about the Digimon game. Yeah, and it was the that was the exact complaint. Yeah, I like those kinds of games. Yeah. I'm a big fan of story oriented games, so I was pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. I fully admit I am part of the minority. Yeah, I. But it sounds like this next game is going to be the one they're going to be going for. The next game, it looks very open worldy pokemon like what we're trying to do your digimon follow you you train them you give them like certain stat boosters and everything like that you take them out for poopies yeah you take them out for poops uh <laughs> <laughs> but it, it looks like they're going back to their roots with i mean they literally named it digimon world yeah so they clearly know that they're going back to kind of their core like fundamentals nice um so i'm very excited for it i'm glad that it's getting a resurgence and i really hope people get it nice because I don't want the sales in America for survive for them to be like, well, I guess it's not ready to come back to America. Yeah. Cause if they can tune it in, cyber sleuth is one of my favorites. I think it's better than any Pokemon game I've ever played, but you like that specific style. The I, I'm telling you this right now. Was that the last one that came out? Cyber sleuth was the one before survive. Oh, survive was one. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Survive sorry. Was sorry. The most recent one. Yeah. Cyber sleuth was a better Pokemon game than Pokemon. Okay. Like, I highly recommend anybody that's a fan of Pokemon go play Cyber Sleuth. It's on sale for on Steam all the time for like twenty bucks because it's like a twenty fifteen game. Hmm. It's amazing. It's so incredibly good for a monster battling game. I really hope that this new one does well, so Digimon can start coming back. Nice, yeah. Because I think it's well deserved. I mean, I think they're great. Yeah, can't Pokemon can't have a monopoly. I mean, it can. It has. Yeah. Well, comp- <laughs> I know. it kind of is, uh, but like competition's good. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. Because I mean, I was—I don't want to say a hipster kid because you don't want to know what that is when you were a kid. Yeah. I loved Metabots. Like I was a kid growing up and liked all these random Japanese shows that were on like Toonami and stuff. Mm-hmm. No idea I was a weeb so young. Well, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but yeah, so I'm glad that a lot of that stuff's coming back. Nice. Yeah. You got anything else on that topic? I don't think so. I just kind of wanted to bring awareness to it. Talk about it. A lot of people don't know about Digimon here. Yeah. I yeah. want more people to know. Yeah. It's great. It's It's pretty buck wild. Yeah. Yeah. So check out Digimon. Um, stick with us after the break. I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, the movie called Cocaine Bear. Yeah, and, and how true it is. <laughs> yeah, how much truth is involved. But hey, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, please like, subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend. We don't have advertising. It's you guys, and uh, we got a lot of big things on the horizon. We got uh, our live D&D show. If you're in Indianapolis, buy your tickets now. We're already about a third sold out and it's um, a month away. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's crazy. And uh, if you buy a ticket, send us proof you bought a ticket and we will take submissions for like either a critical hit, critical miss, mm-hmm. a magical item, an Many NPC things. name. Uh, and we'll be doing that live in in the show as well. It's going to be mm-hmm. interaction. It's going to be a really good time. Yep. Uh, but with that out of the way, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to part two. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a review, we'll read it, or a comment, let us know what you think. But I think we're about to talk about how incredibly true the new cocaine bear is. It's, it's, it's almost like a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> if I, <laughs> if seems- I had to guess. Um, so, um, yeah, take it away, Tyson. All right. If you, if you guys have not heard about the story of cocaine bear, it's a very fun thing. It became a meme on yeah. the internet, and it's officially <clears throat> getting a movie. Yeah. Um, which looks ridiculous and fun. Uh, we rented out a theater for Violent Night. I think we're going to do that again for Cocaine Bear. I hope so. Um, because that's going to be just a, a wild time. Which I don't think any of them know about the theater thing. Ah, it's fine. We'll, okay. we'll we'll update them later. It's all right. We'll do a personal update. Cool. This is all about Cocaine Bear and truth. Yeah. <laughs> so if you watch the if you watch the trailer, it is a wild time. This bear. Uh, the story is a bear ate cocaine. Mm-hmm. And became the biggest apex predator on the planet for about 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> right. But this bear eats cocaine and he starts menacing this uh, village. There's drug dealers. It's very exciting. There's shootouts. There's, you know, ambulance driving. Like a whole wild, like this very ridiculous thing. A mur- like a bear murder spree. Yep. All this not- nutso stuff. Which is very different from the uh, actual events. Right, the truth. The truth. Uh, so the truth story is, I'm gonna, I'll give you guys the true story. I'll give you the breakdown. On mm-hmm. September 11th. Always remember. Uh, in the 80s. Yeah, in <laughs> 1985. 
Uh, on September 11th, 1985, a man was found in the driveway dead wearing a bulletproof vest and a parachute. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, he was wearing Gucci loafers, had night vision gobble, gobbles, <laughs> night vision goggles, <laughs> a couple of handguns, a couple of knives, and $4,500 in 1980s money. Which is in 1980s money, yeah. <laughs> right next to Monopoly money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was 4500 in the 80s. That's uh, basically unlimited money. I think that's a million dollars now after inflation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ropes and food. Ooh. Uh, and also... Uh, the, I, I guess this is, we should probably mention this. I don't know. It doesn't seem important, but it was a big, big bag of cocaine worth fifteen million dollars, right? Yeah. In nineteen eighties yeah. money, <laughs> like, which is better than forty five hundred dollars. Dollars, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this dude uh, was found dead in a driveway, and uh, they investigate it, and they find out this is a guy named uh, Andrew C. Thornton the uh, second. He's got an interesting life, which is not as interesting as the bear, ironically. Uh, Andrew was a rich kid turned paratrooper, turned narcotics officer, turned lawyer, turned Kentucky-based drug smuggler. So the average life of a federal agent. Yeah, okay, just a cool. normal, just, just a pretty normal dude. Yep. Uh, he was the head of the, of a drug ring called the company, mm. which is good. You want to keep it pretty unexciting. What do yeah. you do? I was just. I work for the company. Business. <laughs> yeah. I do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because like if you're like, oh, we got to find the, the murder bugs or whatever. Like, oh, that's pretty exciting. We should find them. What, that's what true. What do you do? I work for the company. Also, the company, you don't know what they do. I mean, we just started a company. We don't know what we do. We don't know what we do. And our name wouldn't even remotely no. let you understand what that is. But it's uh, so, so far pretty good. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. I'm pretty sure that's going to be Ray Liotta's character. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is probably going to be that guy. Because Gucci slippers, bulletproof vest, that's a bold combo. Yeah. So he, he was uh, flying one night, and I don't know why he had to do this, but he ended up dropping out 40 plastic containers of Coke from his private plane. And then he jumped out, and his plane crashed, and he died uh, when he jumped from the plane uh, because he his friends say that he liked to push how late he opened the chute. Which is smart. Yeah. Yeah. He found it. He yeah. found, he found, he, well, he was like, well, I was, it was a, a little earlier, actually. He tried to maximize fun. <laughs> and then, failed. And failed. You know, he had the rest of his life to figure it out. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Um, so, and then, uh, so that was on September 11th. That's when that all happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on December 21st, December 23rd, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation reported finding a dead black bear that had eaten uh the 40 packets of cocaine yeah, that was about 75 pounds of cocaine, of cocaine. <laughs> that is amazing so much cocaine it, yeah yeah just the fact like the they did the weight of it the weight of the bear was 175 mm-hmm. and then it loved cocaine so much it ate another <laughs> 75 pounds which is understandable is <laughs> uh, man the, then the so ch- then what happened to the bear, Tyson? Uh, well, here, let me tell you what happened with the bear. The chief medical examiner, which you know is a good story yeah. if he's already involved, mm-hmm. uh, from Georgia State Crime Lab. I think you're getting ahead of yourself. The bear... Hang on. Died immediately. Like- <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't die immediately. The uh, the the Dr. Kenneth uh, Alonzo stated that the stomach was literally packed to the brim with cocaine. <laughs> there isn't a mammal on the planet that could survive that. Cerebral hemorrhaging, respiratory failure, hyperthermia, renal failure, heart failure, shrong, which is supposed to be stroke. Oh. <laughs> you name it, that bear had it. So that bear ate 75 pounds of cocaine and then died. Died, yeah. Because <laughs> it ate yeah. 75 pounds of cocaine. And I'm sure that Cocaine Bear will show that and then the credits will roll and we'll just have a nice little 10 minute movie. Yep. <laughs> It's all it's all in the mind of a child. That's what it is, shaking a snow club. So the movie has all of these things happen. You know, gunfights, ambulance chases, uh, hitchhikers getting mauled to death. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, one only two bodies are in this story. And the guy who jumped out of a plane and then the bear that ate all of the cocaine. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, but the fun thing is it's still, it's like, there's still a more interest. There's an, another chunk of interesting story after this. Yeah. Because this bear in death lived a more interesting life than 97% of humanity. Yeah. I also just want there to be a really funny scene of the guy that just walks out of his house in a robe, like scratching his nuts. And then he just looks at the ground and there's just a, a 
dead guy with a parachute in Gucci slippers, just yeah. barely tucked out the parachute. Yeah, being like, ah, oh, my god. Yeah, and originally with ninety five hundred dollars on him instead of forty five. So yeah. like, well, <laughs> right. This is for therapy later. They got to find some money. Yep. And by therapy, I mean whiskey. So after the bear died, he gets uh, the doctor Kenneth gives the bear to a taxidermy buddy he had, and it gets gifted to the uh, Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. Then there was going to be a forest, like a forest fire was coming, so they packed the bear up and put it in storage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a month later, it was stolen and sold to a pawn shop. <laughs> <laughs> how how do you approach a pawn? Shop <laughs> hey, do you have, with a big stuffed bear? Do you purchase uh, dead bears? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> bear with me. I have a proposition and a love for puns. Ooh, uh, nice. But then the then the country singer Waylon Jennings goes to the pawn shop and buys it. So now this bear has eaten 75 pounds of cocaine, died, was stuffed, put into a national park, fled a forest fire, sold to a pawn shop, bought by a country singer. It's a pretty good life so far. Not bad. Not done yet. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the, the, the cocaine bear, uh, also known as uh, Pablo Escobar. Uh, Which whoever came up with that name. Is good job. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, then it was, rifted to, it was grifted to Ron Thompson. Uh, do you know what Ron Thompson did? No. It's not Rob Thomas, but it's close. Mm -hmm. Rob Thompson was a, uh, a wealthy man who was a Las Vegas party hookup uh, for celebrities. So mm -hmm. he owned a he owned a mansion, put cocaine bear in it, and then just probably sold more cocaine. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, and ironically, Rob Thompson was actually an associate of uh, Andrew Tom Andrew Thornton, the guy who died out of the plane. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and then after Ron died. It was then once again put up for auction and purchased for two hundred dollars, which seems like a bargain. Yeah, like, was, they didn't know what they had. No, they had no idea. Uh, and it, it was put into a uh, uh, Mr. Tang uh, as a, a possible Mr. Tang. I don't know okay. what to say. I don't know if that's right. Tiang. Or not. Tiang. I, I I think I'm not sure. I apologize. Yeah. Either right. way. Even if I'm saying it right, <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. I'm going to just call him Mr. T. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ooh, then after... Mr. T, you bought it. Different Mr. <laughs> T. But uh, after uh, Ron died, it was then put up for auction and bought for $200 and put on display in Mr. T's traditional Chinese medicine shop. Mm -hmm. And then when Mr. T died... I don't know if I would want to own cocaine bear. <laughs> 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 because... Because I, there's not a good history here. It's I think it, he's actually just like exuding like aerosoled cocaine. I think that's <laughs> what's happening. Uh, but then after Mr. T died, uh, it was eventually made its way back to Kentucky, uh, to the Kentucky Fun Mall in Lexington, uh, just for the cost of shipping. This bear is constantly lowballed. I don't yeah. know why. Oh, 200 bucks at auction. That's so true. But that is the true events of Cocaine Bear compared to what the movie is going to be. Which is nonsense. <laughs> I honestly, with all of the crazy stuff going on, if I, if I was going to do a based on a true event story, I'd rather see this movie. I, I'd make like an anthology. Yeah, where every like the bear is dead. Like you see the bear, the guy has the you know he starts out with a daring escape, mm -hmm. and then he crashes and died. That's all right. He jumped out of the plane for a reason. Died. Yeah. Then the bear eats the cocaine. Bear dies. Mm -hmm. Bear is not. Bear is very minimal. Gets stuffed. Get something forest fires coming and there's like a cool little story about the forest fires you know what i mean and you can make little vignettes about all the cool little things what if you did an, the entire movie from the eyes of the stuffed bear that'd be very hard to do but very interesting right like it's just the eyes of the bear he's going it's just eating cocaine just nom, nom, nom. Om, nom, nom, for like five minutes and you get this wacky thing it dies yeah and then it's sitting on the front like deck of the building as you see the forest fires in the background yeah they're wrapping it up you just get these little bits of history from it. yeah that sounds awesome that'd be great but but, uh, but based mean, on true events based on true events <laughs> yep the true events are cocaine bear bear yeah that's it, <laughs> like, that's, it. that's all it is oh man but i just figured a, a little bit of a, a little bit of history a little bit of information for you yeah it bothers me how easy it is to say based on true events. It bothers yeah. me a lot because there's so many people that just have inherent trust that are going to see that movie and yeah, it's going to be insane, but they're going to be like, it must have probably just went crazy yeah. and killed a couple people and they made it kooky. Yeah, it was like uh, bear Jaws with a bear. Right, or yeah. Cujo or Cujo, something. Cujo, yeah. Like yeah. 
or, which those are based on true things as well. Sharks exist, and so do dogs. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the movie that really opened my eyes to the whole like based on true events was The Strangers. Okay, yeah, what they say? It's one of my favorite horror movies, and it was the advertising was based on true events. The true events was a hodgepodge combination of like three home invasions. Okay. That really weren't connected at all. It was mostly there was a home invasion where it started with them knocking on the door and asking is blank home. The people answered and said no. So the people knew that they were home, did the invasion and killed the family. Oh, very scary. Not the movie. That's not good. Though. You shouldn't do that. Correct. Yeah, it's not legal. <laughs> but or kind. Yeah, and then there was another incident report that was filed where for a home invasion they were taking like balls of mud and like throwing it at the windows and it was causing like really loud noises that scared the family and then they ran away. And these are like scenes from the movie oh, okay. that were just hodgepodge police reports to make a big terrifying movie. Yeah. That still feels better than Cocaine Bear. Oh, absolutely. But when I looked into it, I was like, I need to find out who these people were that were murdered because this is horrible. And then yeah. I find out it's like the hodgepodge. And I'm like, okay, it's yeah. based on true events. Sure, kind of thing. Fair. So, yeah, just uh, keep your eyes open. If you see yeah. that, it might not necessarily be true. It, well, it's 99% time not true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I think that's going to uh, wrap it up. Make sure to leave a, a five-star review on iTunes. If you do, we'll read it on the air. Uh, other than that, uh, make sure to check out Nerd News. We're getting a lot of stuff going on. We got a Patreon getting set up. We should have that up by then and a website and yep. uh, live shows. Live shows. So if you're live in Indianapolis, shows. come on out. Yeah, yeah, we're very excited. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, leave a comment, like, let us know what you like. We genuinely want to make the show better. So if you can just tell us what you think could improve the show, we'll listen and and we like the feedback. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll uh, we'll see you next week. 